today I want to talk to you about rendering and whether we're going to sync or not sync. It was a funny typo when this first got shared on, ty on Twitter, where it was actually S-I-N-K. And I was thinking, oh no, is that, is that what they're predicting my talk to be? But let's hope not. So, to sync or not to sync, let's dive into this. It should be hopefully be an easy question to answer. Which of these grids is better? So on the left, we've got AG Grid running in version 17 of React, where you've got this nice smooth scrolling. You can click the scroll bar, and the rows just appear in the right, right place. But then you upgrade to version 18. So this isn't the live version of AG Grid. This is a, an older version which had this issue. You click the scroll bar, and the rows flash, or you start scrolling up and down, and the rows blank out. And it's like, as you can tell, this is not what we want to, you know, the user experience to be. So we're going to have to try and work out what is going on. So as you know, I'm Steve, and I do work at AG Grid. I'm on the core grid team. Um, and so AG Grid is what we're trying to do is create the best JavaScript data table, whether that's in React or any of the other frameworks. It's a free tier as well as the enterprise. And if you want to find out more, do come and speak to us at the booth. We'd love to talk to you about all of it. But enough about that. Let's try and clarify what we're trying to fix and how React has changed, how we can try and work out what those changes are, and then how we can fix it. So the first bug we're going to look at is clicking the scroll bar causes this flash. Let's see, can you see that? Yes. And then the second uh, issue we've got is when you're scrolling, they're completely wiping out. Okay. And so this is the only line of code which is different between those two examples. So we've upgraded to version 18, um, and then we've switched to create root. So when you're using render, it's the equivalent, basically, of the rendering from version 17. But now with uh, version 18, switch to create root, and then you're going to start enabling all these concurrent rendering features and automatic batching. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go bug hunting. So the first thing to do is, well, let's look at the code which is causing the updates for the road. And there's nothing exciting here. It's just state. So when the row's changing, you scroll, and you need to look at new rows. We're going to update which rows are displayed. So there's nothing really, I mean, unusual there or complicated or anything that should be going wrong. But I think there's some prime suspects for this issue in version 18 concurrent rendering, and also automated batching. And what we're going to do is and see if it's these two features which are now interacting negatively with AG Grid's row virtualization. So I guess, first of all, what is row virtualization? This is a critical performance feature for any data grid. Um, if you want to show thousands and thousands of rows, you don't want to have to render all of that out in HTML because you're going to crash your browser and the experience is going to be really, I guess, slow and difficult. But the main thing is you don't want to overload the browser because drawing HTML is quite expensive. So what we're going to do is we only render the rows that are actually visible in the viewport. So here we go. So a way to imagine the scrolling is we scroll, the viewport changes, and then at this point, if the browser gets to repaint, it's going to repaint an empty um, grid because the rows haven't been updated yet. And then the rows get updated after we've based on the new position of the viewport. So I think what we can kind of imagine that's happening is that the rows aren't being updated quick enough um, as well as the viewport. And so another way we can look at this is in the um, DevTools profile. So in version 17, we'll take this benchmark of this action where we scroll and update the viewport. And the main thing to take away from this chart is that there's a single function call, and then the browser paints. So what that represents is it's scrolling, changing where the viewport is, and rendering the rows all synchronously, and then the browser is painting. So you don't get any kind of flash. And if we do the same thing now with version 18, it should be quite apparent where this flash is coming from, or the result of that um, break. So the scroll happens. Then the browser is actually getting a chance to repaint, which is why we're now getting this empty 
set of rows before the rows are then rendered. So we're getting two paints instead of one. Yep. There we go. And so this is something to, that we need to be aware of in version 18. So rendering is no longer a just purely sequential um, set of instructions, but there's priority based in it. And a lot of the new features in React, they, um, they require the rendering to be interruptible and support yielding to the browser. So use transition is a great example of this. So it's letting you update state without blocking the UI. But these changes in the rendering have some side effects, and we've run into them here in this situation. So I'm not going to go deeper into all of the concurrent rendering and all of that stuff. There's a lot of good information you can get on the, both on the React um, GitHub discussion groups. There's, there's so many good nuggets of information in there in the comments and in the responses. So if you haven't looked at these um, discussions before, that's definitely somewhere I would say take a look if you want to get some more low-level details or just context behind some of these changes. Another great talk is from Ivan, and he's got another talk later on today, so I'd recommend um, listening to him, because this one definitely helps explain a lot of these concepts. Right, but then back to the issue, we've still got to solve this, this bug, because we can't ship this product in the state that it was in. So in the documentation, there's two features which contain the word sync. We could just start there. So there's use sync external store, and also flush sync. So we'll start with use sync external store to start with. So use sync external store, as the name um, suggests, is a way for you to support concurrent reads by forcing updates from a store to be synchronous. And this is all to do with visual tearing, which is the term. Oops. Um, so the way to visualize this or imagine this, this is from one of the discussion groups, is that say the child knows there, they're getting their color based from an external store. So the first one gets to render, um, and the store says you should be blue. And then React is now yield, yielded, because this is part of the new way that we can have interruptible rendering, um, which has given the external store the chance to run an update and to now say that the color should be red. So in version 17, this wasn't a problem, because React was not yielding. So the store could not have updated until React had finished all of its rendering. But now in version 18, because React is yielding during its rendering, the external store is actually getting a chance to run and update. So then rendering is then continued, and it's now picking up the color red. So the fact that we've seen blue and red displayed at the same time is called a visual tear. So that's something which maybe isn't happening in our situation, or maybe it is. So how do you use use sync external store? Well, there's two parts to it. You need a subscription method and also a snapshot method. So the way this works is you need to, I need to turn that off. One second. <laughs> there we go. I'm not sure which one that was. Um, the subscription is a way of setting up a callback to say, I'm going to take this function from React, so that's the state changed, and I'm going to subscribe it to my store. So when rows are changed, I can then call that function to tell React that something has updated in my store. And so when that has then happened, React is then going to call your snapshot method. And this snapshot method has to return an immutable state of your store so that React can then use that snapshot and complete its rendering from there. So this is the way that instead of React keep coming back to the store um, during the rendering, it's just returns the snapshot, and then uses that consistently. So then even if your store updates, React will then see um, that it's had this state changed method called, and it will go back and get a new snapshot and restart the rendering, instead of rendering halfway through and have the tearing. So that's how this, um, this hook works. You, you say, you sync external store, pass it the subscription method, and also the snapshot, and then you can use it like state. Um, like, you know, in your controller and just map over them. But then the big change is that this is now done synchronously. So does it work? Well, yeah, it does. It fixes our first bug. So now you can click, and the rows are not flashing as the viewport has changed. 
and we can validate this within the profiler. So once again, we've got this single function um, scroll where we're scrolling the viewport and updating the rows that are rendered before the browser has a chance to paint, So which is why that flash has now gone. So this is kind of looking good. So we fixed the first bug, but what about the second one? When scrolling, you know, are we going to get this continuous flashing of rows? And also, it's worth noting here that we don't really have an external store. So we're potentially using the wrong um, API here, because the, all we're updating is state. And we're not having our rows, I guess, change as a set during the rendering. So I think that's something which, you know, you should only use this hook in the right situations. Um, but let's just carry on for now. So this is what happens when you start scrolling with use sync external store. It's slightly different behavior. I don't know if you can quite see it, but there's empty rows now. So previously it was completely whiting out, but now there's empty rows. But I think the, the idea here is something is still not quite right. So this is where we can reach for another tool in our, to debug this and look at the React uh, profiler. So if we compare the profiles for scr scrolling, in version 17 we had like over 1,000 uh, renders. This is when you do lots of continuous scrolling. But then version 18 is only 225. So something is going on that's quite radically changed how React is, is now rendering this. And that now points us back to our other suspect feature of automated batching. So this is a out-the-box performance improvement in React 18. So in version 17, state updates within an event handler were batched, but state updates anywhere else weren't batched together. So in version 17, this code within the set timeout would result in two renders. So first you'd update the count, React would re-render, set the flag, it would render again. But in version 18, with automated batching, they're now batched together in the same render and it will only do it once. So this sounds like a great performance win. And in the majority of applications and situations, this is exactly what we want. We don't want React doing wasted render cycles when it knows within this event, this is everything that has changed. But this is a breaking change. And React, they do note, note this, that it is a breaking change. And they expect it to be a performance improvement, but they also then handily provided an opt-out called flush sync. So now we can go and see, well, is this actually what we need to do to solve our problem? So flush sync, the idea behind this is it lets you force React to flush the updates um, that you make within a callback. And so that you can then ensure the DOM is updated before you um, I guess, perform any other actions. A common use case for this is um, input focusing, um, among other things. But then there is a pitfall, so it's saying, you know, it could hurt the performance of your app. And this is because we're then opting out of that automatic batching. So whatever you run within this flush sync callback, you're going to force the browser to render. So if you do use it in the wrong way, you could hurt the performance of your app. So this is a way that it can work you wrap those state updates in flush sync. And so this one is doing the counter and the flag within the flush syncs, and it's going to force render, React to then render them both um, synchronously, and you're back to the two renders. So let's, let's try this out now in our, in our situation. So instead of the use sync external store, we can use flush sync, which is a lot less code. Um, there's no subscription or snapshots. And we just wrap the set row controllers in flush sync. Once again, this fixes the first uh, bug, because it's forcing that to render synchronously. But then we're still getting this same behavior. So we still haven't got to the bottom of the issue in terms of where is all these extra uh, updates being batched together. Yeah, as it's still only at the 225, and it's not at version 17. So now that's when we can go back to the code and think, well, actually, it's not only to set telling which rows should be re-rendered, it's also the individual rows where we can um, say which cells are being rendered. So within a row component, 
you've got lots of different cells. And that's another part of the state. So when a row is created, it then gets the cells that it should display. And that's another set state. So if we also flush sync at that point in time, then we're saying to React, actually, I want you to render this set of rows. But for every individual row, make sure that you render all those cells and, and flush those out. And so once we do that, we flush across the rows and the cells, we're back to um, the version 17 kind of performance and experience. And we've resolved the issues that were introduced with React 18, which is great. But another thing, which is a side effect of this, is that it actually really helps on slower machines. So it, Flush Sync, it results in this better user experience because now we're forcing the browser to re-render one row at a time. So if our users are on like an underpowered machine, we don't really want them to see what's happening on the right where they scroll and it's just completely blank and they're left wondering, you know, is there any data coming or not? At least on the left, they can see, well, it is taking time, but the data is coming through. So, I mean, this is a very extreme, I've, you know, made the render, it just spins for like a couple of seconds before letting React carry on. But it's, it's an idea where we don't, we're not always in control of where our component is running. You know, we can't, you know, ensure that everyone has a really fast, you know, Mac M2 laptop or anything. So it's important that as a component library, we work to make sure that the default does scale and run across all the different places that it might be used. And what about faster machines? Well, if you know that AG Grid is only going to be used on faster machines, you can kind of sidestep all of this and say, yeah, I'm just going to let the rendering be, be synchronous. Because if, you can, if your machine is fast enough to be able to keep up with the updates, in, in a way that isn't causing it to block, then you can get really nice performance uh, that way. But you do have to be careful that you know exactly where this application is running, if you're in control. So like, if you're in an internal company and you know the spec of everything, that might be suitable for you. But it's not the default um, because it could lead to these, uh, this blocking. So takeaways. So React 18 does offer a lot of improvements, um, but you do need to check the assumptions that are being made against your own application. So for us, at first we were excited. We were thinking, well, okay, batching, that's going to be good. That's going to improve the performance. We're not going to render as much. Um, but then as you can see, it led to these, these side effects where we're getting this flashing, which is definitely not what we wanted. So we saw we could use the use external store, but it wasn't quite the right fit. And Flush Think was actually the the fix that we were looking for. And then also, it's important to consider the wide range of machines that your um, application or component is going to be run on, um, and so that you can degrade performance or the, you know, the rendering appropriately. So if you do want any more insights, I've done another talk on patterns for performance three weeks ago. Um, at React Advanced London, and that's another place where we look at, well, how can we avoid renders as well by doing direct style manipulation? So if you do want more insights into what we're doing at AG Grid to make sure the component is as fast as possible, that's another resource you might find interesting. But thanks for listening, and if you want to find out more about AG Grid, do come and see us at the booth, and hopefully you haven't got any too difficult questions for me next. <laughs>